I love this man, Colin Quinn. He's got the delivery of a stroke victim, but he's going to make you fucking die tonight. How about a hand for my friend, Colin uh, Quinn? Colin Quinn. Quinn. How nice. How nice to see Colin here at uh, the roast. Thank you, Bob. Bob Levy. This was a great roast. You didn't put this one together, did you? <laughs> After, after the Daniel Carver roast, clan membership went up 30% among serious satellite listeners. <laughs> Bob, you are great. You eat blue cheese out of a girl's ass every night on stage, and you're still not famous. What does that tell you? <laughs> Maybe it's that complexion. Of, you've been living in a Bisquick warehouse. <laughs> You look like a head that was just pulled out of a mass grave in Baghdad. Oh my God. Who's your mortician, for Christ's sakes? All right, um, <laughs> Jim Florentine, it's fascinating to watch you post crank gankers because it answers the question, what would Will and Flowers be like without Madam? <laughs> Called you pedo, your career's over. <laughs> Can I buy you a fucking Hummel or something? Jesus. Even a G.I. Jill. Lisa Lampanelli, she's fucked more black guys than the Rockefeller laws. <laughs> She's got black guys lined up in front of her like she's selling Madden 2007 out of her pussy. <laughs> black, black guys shoot into her like she's a nightclub with a no sneakers policy. <laughs> Lisa, you're going to get your heart broken. This is uh, as a friend. It's not a commitment from a man just because he puts you down for conjugal visits. <laughs> Her idea of speed dating is getting fingered before the CO looks over. <laughs> oh, man. Shuley, how old are you? Jesus Christ, you look like an unhealthy Ben Kingsley. <laughs> Except you wouldn't survive the first cut at Auschwitz. <laughs> You look like an NPR guy that stalks Terry Gross. <laughs> Shalom means hello and goodbye, right? Okay, that's your career. Now it's... <laughs> Gary Delabati, make yourself at home. Dust the shelves. <laughs> I saw your wedding video. Mary was so happy she didn't make you mop up the catering hall afterwards. People were less whipped on the Amistad. <laughs> I saw you. I saw that tape of you begging your ex to take you back. Hello, hello. Yeah, that tape shows that marriage didn't change you. Even back then, you were a little bitch waiting for somebody to order you around. Aww. Robin Quivers has Aww. sex with fruits and vegetables. The only woman I know who makes booty calls to Fresh Direct. <laughs> How about Fred? He looks like a retarded Gary Oldman. <laughs> Looks like the major D in a meth lab from the 70s, for Christ's sakes. But then you got Yucko the Clown, a bitter clown that tells dirty jokes. That's original. What's the matter? I couldn't get your head around the wrestler in the tutu concept. <laughs> the air horn takes it to another level. I hope you suffocate to death with 20 of your friends in one of those smashed in cars. And your face is mushed against the windshield with your clown makeup all smeared. <laughs> Speaking of clown makeup, Richard Christie, that's a nice uh, complexion you got, that rosacea. <laughs> and he jerks off at a toy box with his red face like Jack in the Box. <laughs> you look like a horror movie doll. Why don't uh, you and Jim Florentine uh, team up? Uh, you know. <laughs> Oops. Speaking of uh, face cream, what about Sal the Stork Broker? <laughs> what a creep. Do you wear that so you think it covers up your unhealthy obsession with Howard? <laughs> you look like a fucking Bollywood movie star. <laughs> you look like a magician on the love boat. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you keep that cream in the shed you're building for when Howard leaves the show, you stalking fuck? <laughs> I heard him once say he wishes there were a million Howards. Yeah, that's why you bought the wood chipper. <laughs> but at least we're safe here tonight with Ronnie. Ronnie, I'd tell you have a Napoleonic complex, only Napoleon was taller. No. <laughs> you don't look like a bodyguard. You look like a trophy for best bodyguard. <laughs> hey! But all jokes aside... You would be a great bodyguard if the whole world, if we were all in the water. <laughs> but you know, that show you do, that actually that good show with you interview the scores girls is really kind of start the fucking car. All right, anyway. Um, 
but Howard, I listen to you every day on satellite. Why don't you say how great it feels to be able to say whatever you want one more fucking time? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. After all 23 years of being oppressed, okay, you weren't Nelson Mandela. Get over it. <laughs> Hey, I never was happy. Really? We feel like fucking idiots then laughing at the show for 23 years. It never fucking happened. Yeah, thank God you got broke free so you're not censored while you analyze Taylor Hicks so you're living for the silly, you faggot. All right, the roast is over. Everyone out of here right now. I think, I think Gary hired that homeless guy to attack you so you'd have something to talk about on Monday besides Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Speaking of dancing with the stars, that's it. Talk Beth out of it. That doesn't sound like something a woman would throw back in your face for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs> but let's get to Artie Lang, who's uh, looks oh, like yeah. a he looks like a Bulgarian mail order bride cross with Jerome Bettis. Wow. But Artie. Oh, do you come a long way? Because you used to be a, a, a dock worker, right? A longshoreman? Yeah. You had to get up at five in the morning, go to work, goof off, crack dick jokes, and get fucked up on the weekends, and now look at you. <laughs> that's right, motherfucker! <laughs> Shut up. Um, that's right, motherfucker. Shut up. <laughs> No, but I know you you got to work out, Audie. I'm serious now. I know you're trying, but I don't think that heart palpitations from bad coke counts as cardio. <laughs> I know you're a big sports fan, too. I found out you're 116th Indian, so it runs in the family. Nice to know your great-grandmother was fucking Jim Thorpe for good seats at the Oklahoma game. <laughs> Not for everybody. <laughs> No, but I think this movie, everyone's making fun of your movie. I think this movie could make you the guy they call when Jack Black is busy. Um, <laughs> and you got to get in shape. Your laugh is frightening. Ah, you sound like Gary the Retard coming. <laughs> and then I heard Dana hurt her ankle, by the way. Was that kicking you to the curb? Or how did that happen? <laughs> All jokes aside, if you do break up with Dana, I have a girl I'd like you to meet. Her name is Jenny Craig. <laughs> You look like the fucking Budweiser frog if you switch back to vodka. Now listen to me. Um, I got some other good jokes, but I'm saving them for you. Wake. Listen. I was listening the other morning. You said this show, no holds barred at the roast, right? I was listening the other morning. Everybody's saying, oh, if you had a kid, you wouldn't drink. And everybody's like, why don't you try now? And you're like, well, it's not even about the drinking now. Really? It's not about the fucking drinking? I saw you on Jimmy Kimmel looking like Brian Wilson in 1972. <laughs> In this room and millions of fans have told you to stop. Listen to me, you fucking future memorial tribute. Quit drinking and drugs today, or you'll be nothing but a name at a fucking yearly benefit that we have to save others from your fate, and people who never liked you are going to use your name pretending they were close friends, okay? Because you know what the truth is, Artie? Everybody loves you, except Dana. 